Let us pray. Still speaking, God, too often we don't sense your presence nor your voice. We look for your response to our deepest needs, but when we don't hear it in a worldly perspective, we seem to find you silent. Help us now to hear your voice and feel your presence in our daily life as we pray that the meditations of our hearts and the words of my mouth might be pleasing and acceptable to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. A man was sleeping one night in his cabin when suddenly his room was filled with light and God appeared. The Lord told the man he had work, he had work for him to do and he showed him a large rock in front of his cabin. The Lord explained that the man was to push against the rock with all his might. So this man so that this the man did, day after day. For many years he toiled from sun up to sun down, his shoulders set squarely against the cold massive surface of the unmoving rock, pushing with all his might. Each night the man would return home to his cabin sore and worn out, feeling that the whole day had been spent in vain. But slowly doubts began to come, and he thinks to himself, You've been pushing against this rock for a long, a long time, and it hasn't moved an inch. He begins to believe that the task is impossible, and that he is a failure. These thoughts discourage and dishearten him. Then he thinks, hey, why kill yourself over this? I'll just push, uh, I'll just put in my time, giving just the minimum effort, and that'll be good enough. So that's what the weary man planned to do. But first he decided to make it a matter of prayer and take his troubled thoughts to the Lord. Lord, he prayed, I've lab labored long and hard in your service, putting all my strength to do which you have asked. Yet after all this time, I have not even budged that rock a half an inch. What's wrong? Why am I failing? The Lord responded, wait a minute. When I asked you to serve me, you accepted it. And I told you that your task was to push against the rock with all your strength, which you have done. Never once did I mention to you that I expected you to move it. Your task was to push. And now you come to me with your strength spent, thinking that you have failed. Really? Look at yourself. Your arms are strong and muscled. Your back sinewy and brown. Your hands are calloused from constant pressure. Your legs have become massive and hard. Through all that opposition, you have grown much, and your abilities now surpass that which you used to have. Yes, you haven't moved the rock, but your calling was to be obedient and push and to have faith to trust in my wisdom. That you have done. Now I, my friend, will move the rock. Jesus teaches a prayer to his disciples because they've come to him and said, teach us. Teach us like John taught his disciples. And in the original Greek, it actually sounds, as, as Jesus does this, it actually sounds more of an insistence, an insistent type of instructions to his disciples, rather than just suggesting some humble intercessions. Jesus, in his prayer, is promoting tenacity. Tenacity in prayer. He tells us that we are to ask and will receive. We're to pray fervently and patiently watch for the results. We're to search and we'll find. We will find. You see, we're to look where God is already working and join in. And a knock. And it will be open. The door will be open. See, we're supposed to step out of our comfort zone and be completely amazed. This story about, about the man and his friend coming to coming and he doesn't have anything to feed him has two different sides to the story. It has a human side and it has a divine side. And from the human side, this man is already in bed 
the kids are asleep, and he, he doesn't want to get up. Even though his friend has come and said, I need bread. He says, no, go away. But Jesus said, if the man is persistent, if he's persistent, even though he's in bed, he'll get up and give the man what he needs. The divine side of this story says that if mortal parents can provide for children, even though they are not perfect, and even though, as the scripture says, they're evil, okay, can't God do even more than what a mortal parent can do? We are to be bold and confident in our prayers. We're to realize that, we, that there is a powerful spiritual reality about prayer. Just like I explained to the children. There's something inside of us. God resides inside of us. God's Holy Spirit, God's own Spirit resides inside of us. And we are to be bold about that spiritual reality. The Holy Spirit is real. God is with us always, everywhere we go, every step of the day, every moment, every minute. God is with us. God knows our innermost thoughts. God knows when we need something. God knows when we are despondent, depressed. God knows when we're joyful and happy. God knows that. But do we believe it? This is why we are to be persistent. Because we have to convince ourselves that God's spirit is, good, is, is uh, strong enough to actually do something about our condition. We need to be persistent in prayer because we need to be persistent in our own understanding and belief that God is with us. And God looks at us with love, believing that we are of value. We are worthy of forgiveness. We are worthy of eternal life. Our God loves us. And our God finds worth in every single one of you worth and value to be forgiven, to be given eternal life, to spend eternity with God. But unfortunately, our prayers, right, our prayers don't always end the suffering. They don't always end the grief. Not always a happy ending. Jesus had a pretty bad Friday about 2,000 years ago didn't work out real well for him. Worked out wonderfully for us, but it didn't work out too well for him. But think about it. God was with him the entire time. God was there. And even Jesus forgives those who put him on the cross. No. The prayers don't always end our suffering. The prayers don't always end our grief. The prayers don't always end, or end in a happy ending. But what the prayer does do is it binds us in relationship with God. Our prayers, through the Holy Spirit, bind us to God. And not only does it bind us to God, but it binds us to humankind. It binds us to each other. When we pray, every week we do joys and concerns. Every week you go home with your bulletin so that you can list out those who you need to pray for. Your prayers link you with humankind. They link you with God in a special, special relationship. Our prayer gives us strength through the Holy Spirit to know that we are loved, that God believes in us enough to allow us to be residents for the Holy Spirit inside of us. The Holy Spirit gives us strength, and it means that we can find life meaningful. Think about it. When we're depressed and we're upset and we're down in the mouth about certain things and things just are not going well, all you have to do is realize you have God in 
inside of you. Life is meaningful because God is with you. And God says, be persistent. Jesus says, be persistent. Because we have to convince ourselves of God's answers. Too often, we don't see our, our prayers answered because we're not looking. We're not listening. Because we're expecting one thing when we get another. You see, too often, we don't know how exactly to pray. We're not sure what we're supposed to do. So, so Jesus gives us a template. He says, here, here's the Lord's Prayer. Here's my prayer for you. You, have, you want to know how to pray? Here's what you have to do. One, honor God. Honor God. Put God first. Hallowed be your name. Show God the appreciation for all that God has done in your life. Two, work toward God's reign. Thy kingdom come. Do God's work and do it in God's way, not the world's way. Do it divinely, not secularly. Too often we depend on how the, what the world thinks of us and how the world looks at us and what we have to do to stay up with the Joneses or stay up with the Smiths or whatever instead of looking and saying, you know what, I can help that person over there. We have this wonderful ability and God asks us to bring his reign into this world. And God's forgiveness, God asks us to forgive others because we are valued so much that God forgives us when we make mistakes. When we don't do things the way we're supposed to, God forgives us and asks us, please, do the same for others because others are not perfect. None of us are perfect. We all make mistakes. So if I can forgive you, can't you forgive others? And God asks us to trust in God's protection. The, the guiding of the Holy Spirit to lead us not into temptation, to, to allow us to stay away from the time of trial. Trust in God's protection. Trust in God to help to guide you so we don't make mistakes, so we don't we tend to make better decisions. We don't go down that, that road that sometimes are disasters. Listen for the Holy Spirit to guide you this is prayer, is a community empowerment prayer. It's for the whole body of Christ. It's here. Here is how you as a faith community come together to do God's will. The same way the church comes together to do God's mission. This is not a personal prayer of piety, okay? Where we get what we personally want. This is a prayer of about being in relationship with God and with humankind. Loving God and loving neighbor. And the fact is, we are shaped by our prayers. By what we pray, why we pray, and who we pray for. You know, it was said in the Bible, it's much better to give than to receive. When we pray for others, we are giving God's love and our own love toward others. What a wonderful feeling that is inside to know that you are praying to the most powerful force in the universe for someone else. What a wonderful way to share God's love in your own. See, our prayers are our relationship with God. Think about it. Is there anybody, in, is there anybody on this earth that you are in a relationship with that you've never talked to in your life? Okay, other than the IRS. Think about it. To be in relationship with somebody, normally you have to talk to them. You've got to be in relationship with them, usually through communication. So if you're not praying to God, are you really in relationship with God? Prayer allows us to talk with God, to be in that relationship, moment by moment, day by day, year by year, month by month allows us to be in that relationship. And we are to persistently ask and be amazed at the answers we receive. 
like I said, sometimes they're not always what you expect. And it's not always in the time that you determine. But prayers are always answered. We just have to be really observant and be patient for the answers. Because just like the man in our story, he wasn't looking that his prayer, in fact, was answered. That he was doing God's will. He didn't realize it. And that's sometimes what happens with our prayers. We don't realize that they've been answered. I can remember the person coming to me and saying, I prayed for the person to be whole. They had cancer and they died anyway. I said, well, yeah, you asked, you prayed to God for them to be whole. If cancer has ravaged their body, how else can they be whole? How else can they be whole? To be with God, cancer-free, completely whole, for eternity. What a wonderful gift you ask for it and may not even realize you ask for that. But you ask for someone to be whole, to be cured. And they were in the most ultimate, ultimate way. When everything seems to go wrong, just push. When your job gets you down, just push. When people don't react the way you think they should, just push. When your money is gone and the bills are due, just push. When people don't understand you, just push. Pray until something happens. Push. Remember, blessed are those who hear the word of God and actually believe it. 